Kristo. Onaga seemed invincible. The races of Outworld were in disagreement over how to deal with this threat, and Baraka's hordes were sweeping the land. Bo Raicho had almost given up hope when he was visited by the spirit of his greatest student, Liu Kang. Their roles now reversed, Liu Kang gave Bo Raicho the inspiration necessary to continue the fight. Bo Raicho's soul was invigorated. He met with Outworld's many leaders to forge a temporary truce. Kitana gave him command of what remained of her army, and he led them to battle against Baraka's mutant foot soldiers. The new army of Outworld crushed the Tarkata vermin, and Baraka himself was bested by Boraicho's attack. The victory inspired the people of Outworld to rise up against the Dragon King. Normally, Dairu took no risks and ambushed those he had been hired to kill. But in this case, he felt compelled to announce his intentions to kill his fellow guardsman, Hotaru. There still must have been some code of honor left in his cynical heart. Hotaru was defeated, but before Dairu could reveal who had commissioned the attack, Hotaru drew his dying breath. The mercenary Dairu had succeeded in stealing the Declaration of Order and was paid many coins for his efforts. After Darius hid the document, he announced its capture to the world and heralded a new beginning for the realm of Sado. As Darius had predicted, officials were outraged that the Resistance had stolen the most prized possession of the Sadan government. Hotaru was ordered to lead the charge against them. He underestimated their numbers, however, and the Resistance defeated him and his men. The Senate would soon be in the hands of the revolutionaries. In an outer chamber of the Dragon King's throne room, Ermac did battle with Liu Kang's enslaved comrades. Ermac was more than a match for the five warriors, but their defeat was not his objective. Liu Kang materialized and one by one freed their souls while Ermac occupied the rest. Eventually, all five were awakened from their enchantment and freed from Onaga's control. Ermac was pleased that his warrior's skills could for once bring about a noble outcome. He sensed, however, that an ominous force still shaped the destiny of the realms. It was everywhere. He could feel its influence on Onaga, though the Dragon King was oblivious to its manipulation. Time was running out. Ermac feared the celebration of this latest victory would be short-lived. The others had defeated the Dragon King, but left his broken body unattended on the floor of his throne room. Not long ago, a similar fate had befallen his former advisor, Shao Kahn. Havoc ripped the still warm heart from the carcass and consumed it, thus absorbing Onaga's power to reanimate the dead. Had the Dragon King succeeded in his plans for total domination, the never-ending turmoil of life would have come to a stifling halt. Those who defeated him believed that the realms were at rest once more. But Havoc vowed to restore the chaos that once ravaged Outworld. Shao Kahn would rule again. In the wilds of Outworld, Hotaru captured the renegade Earthrealm warrior Sub-Zero and brought him before the Dragon King. Onaga's judgment of Sub-Zero was swift, and Hotaru was given the task of carrying out his punishment. Death. His fate served as a reminder to all who would challenge the authority of the Dragon King. The traitor Tanya had given the Dragon King the information he needed to finish merging the Kamidogu. But before he conquered all the realms, Jade would see Tanya dead. Jade had allowed Baraka's soldiers to capture her, feigning defeat in battle. As Tanya approached her prisoner, Jade waited for the right moment and threw a glass orb filled with concentrated Tarkata essence at her. The glass broke, splashing its contents across Tanya's body. Baraka and his vile savages worked themselves into an uncontrolled frenzy. They perceived Tanya to be a rival male and instinctively attacked. I doubt she survived the encounter.
Levick had given Cabal's new black dragon recruits a task. Lure the heroes away from the Dragon King's corpse while he somehow retrieved the heart. And with it, Onaga's power to raise the dead. Apparently, Onaga's ancient army had only been invincible by means of constant resurrection during battles. The power to raise the dead would prove quite useful to the Black Dragon clan. Cabal slew Havoc and took the Dragon King's heart for himself. Havoc was most impressed. Once they had defeated the enemies of Havoc, Cabal complimented Cobra and Kira on their ferocity in battle. Their true test, however, was to face each other, to decide which of them was worthy of the new Black Dragon clan. Neither refused the challenge. Cobra fought with ferocity, but his lack of discipline allowed Kira to control the battle, easily manipulating Cobra into exposing himself to her attacks. She defeated him and proved her worth to Cabal, who gave her the honor of finding two more recruits to pit against each other in mortal combat. Cabal brought his new recruits to Outworld, where a siege was underway against the Dragon King. Cobra grew impatient. He wanted to join the fray, but Cabal held him back. They were not to attack until the heroes had won. Once the Dragon King had been defeated, Cabal gave the order to strike the victors. The new Black Dragon tore through their ranks and left no survivors. Cobra came to realize that he was going to like being a Black Dragon. An alliance had been formed of warriors from vastly different origins, but with a similar goal, to defeat Onaga. Li Mei marched uneasily into battle against the Dragon King. The closer she got to him, the more she came to understand which side was truly deserving of victory. Li Mei turned on her former allies and gave her emperor the time he needed to finish merging the Kami Dogu. The Dragon King was now all-powerful. He had the means to control the universe, to make and unmake as he saw fit. Li Mei watched in delight as the Elder Gods fled before his might. Onaga then transformed her into his queen, to be forever at his side. He had given her power beyond anything she ever imagined. Together, they will rule the One Realm and slay the last of the Elder Gods. Because it was widely believed that Princess Katana had slain her many years ago, none were suspicious of the veil Malena wore to conceal her Tarkatan features. It was not difficult for her to assume the identity of the princess and take control of her alliance. To further conceal her deception, Melina gave command of the armies to Boraicho and instructed him to lead the attack against Baraka's diversionary forces. Baraka's militia had failed to divert the enemy and to her surprise was decimated by Boraicho's forces. She then realized that she was in control of the most powerful military force in Outworld and Edenia combined. She had finally achieved her true purpose, her destiny. But Melina could not continue her charade indefinitely, not as long as Baraka knew the truth. She ambushed him in the ancient beetle lair and fed him to a swarm of flesh-eating insects. All hail, Princess... Katana. Nightwolf had traversed realms and fought many demons to get to this place deep within the nether realm. Using knowledge passed to him from his forefathers, he drew a binding symbol on the ground and chanted the ancient words that would draw the spirit of the Dragon King to this wicked place. Nightwolf had carried the burden long enough. He released the sins of his people into the mystic symbol and their weight bound Onaga to the nether realm. Free of the corruption he had harbored for so long, Nightwolf was expelled from the depths of the nether realm and into the unknown. With Smoke as his template, Noob Saibot planned to return to the Nether Realm and use Smoke's nanotechnology to create an army of cyborg demons. He was unaware that they were followed by someone Noob had not seen since before he became a wraith. Smoke instantly recognized their visitor 
He was an echo of their past. He was Sub-Zero, Noob Saibot's brother. Noob Saibot was surprised to see how much stronger his brother had become. If he were still Lin Kuei, still human, he would probably have shown some degree of pride. But as Raiden had revealed during the ordeal with Shinnok's amulet, his soul had been tainted when he died at the hand of Scorpion. Noob Saibot, the original Sub-Zero, had descended into the Nether Realm free from compassion. He ordered Smoke to assist him in slaying his brother, his first act as ruler of the Nether Realm. My enemies had failed to prevent me from fusing all the weapons of the Elder Gods into one. I used this ultimate weapon to warp reality, merging the realms into a singular existence. The Elder Gods were helpless as I used their own power against them in the void beyond the One Realm. Not satisfied with merely ruling the One Realm, I seized all that exists and merged it into myself. There can be only one consciousness. I am everything. I have become the One Being. My patience for mortals has worn thin. If I am to protect Earthrealm, I must punish those who would threaten it. The fool Shujinko had let himself be deceived into believing that he worked for a greater good. He was in fact an unknowing tool of a greater evil, one that had almost caused the destruction of Earthrealm. That Shujinko undid his mistake and destroyed the Dragon King is of no importance. Those who place Earthrealm in harm's way will pay with their lives. The Elder Gods had transformed Scorpion into their weapon in order to defeat the Dragon King before his plans of domination unmade the realms. With his enhanced abilities, he tirelessly tracked Onaga through the realms until finally he cornered him in the Nexus. The Dragon King had many allies, but they were of no consequence. It was in fact Scorpion who was the true champion of the Elder Gods, the enforcer of their will. Only he could stop the menace that threatened all that exists. Only he could defeat the Dragon King. So that I would be able to defend myself during the quest to find the Kami Dogu, Onaga had given me the power to absorb the fighting ability of any warrior I encountered, but his gift would prove to be his undoing. The warriors in Outworld were in disarray, heroes were not focused on the true threat of Onaga, and villains were unaware that they were bringing about their own destruction by serving him. I united them, and in one moment absorbed their combined fighting power. I shattered each of the Kamidogu, the source of his invulnerability. This weakened Onaga, and I attacked him without mercy. His mortal form was no match for a combatant infused with the powers of so many warriors. The Dragon King was finally defeated. The realms will remain as they have since the beginning. Although Onaga had returned from the dead, he did not re-inhabit his original body. Sindel and Jade found his sarcophagus opened. His body remained, but the armor was missing. Strangely, the hieroglyphics in his tomb were similar to an ancient Edenian language. She discovered an incantation inscribed by Onaga's holy men that was intended to transport his soul back into its original body. As she was memorizing the spell, Onaga emerged from the shadows. Onaga could have defeated both Jade and Sindel, but instead he took sadistic pleasure in unleashing Katana against them. He was a fool. Jade held off Katana while Sindel thrust her Quan Dao into the heart of the corpse. As she screamed the ancient incantation, Onaga's soul leapt from Reptile's body into its intended vessel. The corpse came to life and cried in agony as the Quan Dao prevented its heart from reforming. 
Sindel held the blade firmly in place as Onaga returned to the cold sleep of death. With the Dragon King defeated, the realms were safe, and Sindel's daughter Katana was free from his spell. May Edenia know peace once more. On his way to the rendezvous point with Raiden and the others, Sub-Zero was ambushed by a band of Tarkatan warriors in the living forest. He tried to outrun them, but there were too many. He was quickly surrounded. Sub-Zero decided that his last living deed would be to vanquish as many of these barbarians as he could before he succumbed to death. As Sub-Zero began his attack, he felt his armor speak to him. It guided and strengthened each blow as he broke their limbs and crushed their skulls. At his feet, a dying Tarkatan warrior uttered the words, Long live the Dragon King. In Edenia, Tanya had located the ancient texts that described the process by which to fuse the Kamidogu into one. With this information, Onaga was able to create the One Kamidogu, a tool of unspeakable power. As the Dragon King was distracted, reveling in his victory, Tanya seized the opportunity to snatch the Kamidogu from him, thereby obtaining godlike power. She destroyed the Dragon King and became ultimate overlord of the realms. Blaze had completed the first of his duties. Soon he will begin the second, to lure warriors to the final battle. There they will challenge him, hoping to attain godlike power from his defeat. The arrogance of these warriors will be their downfall, for only a son of Edenia can unleash the true purpose of Blaze. Sub-Zero returned to Earthrealm only to find many of his clan slain by Frost. She had come back to the Lin Kuei Temple with the intention of killing only him, but she was now delirious and saw Sub-Zero everywhere. Sub-Zero blasted her with intense cold, freezing her until she could be revived and cured of her dementia. He laid her on an altar in the chamber of fallen Lin Kuei and sealed the room with a wall of ice. Frost will one day recover. When that day comes, she will have to answer for her crimes against the Lin Kuei. The Dragon King had defeated us all, save one, Jax. And though I had absorbed the fighting abilities of those who had aided me, I lacked the raw anger that propelled Jax into battle. Brutally pounding Onaga into submission, Jax finally ended the conflict by embedding a Kamidogu in the would-be ruler's head. Where he summoned so much rage from, I cannot say. I only hope that his anger is finally purged. With the Dragon King destroyed, Kitana made her way home to the realm of Edenia. During her journey, she was met by a being made of fire. He informed Kitana that her premonition of a looming conflict was correct, and that she must unite the forces of good for a coming battle to preserve the realms. Disheartened, Kitana fell to her knees. When will it end, she cried. Every victory leads to more conflict and greater adversaries. Blaze simply replied, If all goes as planned, your enemies will be destroyed. Goro had regained control of his Shokan army and fought to cleanse Outworld of the Dragon King's Tarkatan horde. Though the Tarkata are formidable adversaries, they were no match for an army of Shokan inspired as they were by regaining Shao Kahn's favor. Baraka's troops were quickly defeated. Goro had proven himself a powerful ally of the Emperor, but Shao Kahn had given the Shokan much in his return to power. Goro felt a gift of loyalty was in order. The Edenian military had been crushed and Katana herself had been captured. Goro brought her before Shao Kahn and sacrificed her as an offering of fealty to the once and future Emperor of Outworld. Shao Kahn had regained his strength, and he and Goro marched boldly to the Dragon King's throne room, 
slaying all who stood in their way. Like an echo of their battle ages ago, Shao Kahn and Onaga fought with a fury fueled by intense hatred. Knowing the Dragon King was too powerful to defeat in mere combat, Shao Kahn blasted Onaga with his war hammer, causing him to hurtle into Goro's poisoned blades. Onaga had fallen victim to Shao Kahn's treachery once more. With Onaga defeated, Shao Kahn reclaimed Outworld once again. His army of Shokan decimated what remained of Kitana's armies and the Tarkatan horde and scattered their survivors into the unknown. A new era had begun in the realm of Outworld. Long live Emperor Shao Kahn. Smoke had been reprogrammed to serve Noob Saibot, who had brought him to the Netherrealm. Noob believed that Smoke had no soul. Smoke still had a small amount of good left in him, however, which made his presence in Hell incapacitating. Smoke was immobilized by the input his sensors translated as pain. To protect Smoke from harm, his nanotech systems worked furiously to counter the evil forces that were unleashed upon his body. When they were finally brought into balance, Smoke became much more than a mere cyborg ninja. Noob Saibot was not originally a demon, which might explain why Ashra sent such great evil in him. He had to earn his place in the Netherrealm. He actually desired to remain there. His companion, however, seemed to be having a problem adjusting. Perhaps there was some good left in the cyborg. Whatever the case, Noob would have to face Ashra alone. Ashra defeated Noob Saibot and finally earned her ascension from the Netherrealm. But the sword that made her escape possible did not travel with her. I suspect it still remains in the Netherrealm, waiting to release another of its denizens from damnation. Baraka assumed that the treacherous Milena had given her armies a powerful magic. They fought with savage brutality, but he could not stop their advance. He vowed that Milena would pay for her betrayal. Baraka's warriors brought word that she had agreed to meet with him in an ancient lair, but Baraka was no fool. He sent another in his place. Baraka's scouts reported that the Earthrealm warrior Sub-Zero was near. He allowed his remaining militia to deal with him and set off alone to ambush Melina. He knew by the scent of Tarkatan blood on her clothes that she had already killed the one he had sent to meet her. But her sense of smell was not as keen as a true Tarkata's. She was unaware of Baraka's presence. He barked her name, and when she turned to face him, he tore her apart. 